A few months ago, we filmed an episode of Roadkill for Motor Trend. And during the road trip from Arizona to California in Blasphemy, my 1955 Chevy, we installed a fresh Blower Shop 871 supercharger and proceeded to make more power in the tires than its cars ever made. We made over 1,100 at the tires. But then we drove to Bakersfield and I lined up against Freiberger in his F-Rod Model A and something weird happened. My car really wasn't that fast. In this episode, we find out why. Yeah. We might have lost some boost there. Let's investigate. Ah, welcome back to Finnegan's Garage. Huge update for everybody. We are working on the Cadillac. We are working on Blasphemy. We're even working on the garage itself. So we got a lot going on. Um, let's start with this thing. Joe started working on the mid plate. We're gonna weld that in today. Then we got to figure out, uh, why is my head gasket leaking on my head? Uh, none of you are surprised by that because, uh, I don't know, just two weeks ago, I told everybody how reliable this car was. And now um, out of this side of the car, right down here in the corner of the head, when the engine's running, it just pees coolant out. It's a brand new problem. It hadn't happened before, but uh, I don't have an explanation for it, but we're gonna, we're gonna try some fixes. Our first fix is gonna be to get this thing hot, dump in a can of K-Seal head gasket sealer, which uh, I've had good luck with this in the past. Um, and I'm doing this at the suggestion of Pete, who built the motor, Pete Harrell, Harrell Engine and Dyno. Motor's been awesome. Um, it has copper head gaskets in it. They are from flat out gaskets, they're brand new. Um, I don't think necessarily anything's wrong with the head gasket. I think that if we get this thing up to temp, pour this in and retorque it, the problem's probably gonna go away. Um, if it doesn't, then obviously this is gonna be a much longer video because we'll have to put a new head gasket in. But uh, the blower needs to come off because at some point it sneezed and coughed and blew the gasket out the back of it. I don't know if you guys can see that right there. So that needs to get worked on. So yeah, the Cadillac 55 needs to get worked on. We've been working on the garage, check this out. We are rapidly reaching the pinnacle of organization here at uh, Finnegan Speed Marine. Um, not much of this has changed really. I think it all looks the same from the last time you guys saw it. But in here, we it's are- It's like a Miller welding store. Oh, we are super organized because we took some of the cabinets out of my new ATC trailer, the ones that are on the track, and um, we, we took out some and moved some and installed some new ones. These were left over and I thought these would make great cabinets in the garage. So we bolted to the wall, right to the drywall with some anchors, the same track system that's in our trailer so that these can go in there. And if we ever feel froggy and want to put them back in the trailer, they just come right back out and they can go back in the trailer. So that's pretty sweet. And then we reorganized everything in here. So my main goal was to get a lot of stuff off of my welding table so that I just had room to weld. Um, so yeah, that's what's been going on in here. And look, you can actually see the countertop in the camera area now. Yeah, yeah, that was kind of a disaster before. So so yeah, everything's going good, everything's humming right along. Uh, right now, I think we'll take Blast Me outside, fire it up, put some water in the radiator, pour in the K-Seal and let it get up to operating temp. And um, they say you gotta run it for like 10 or 20 minutes, which my neighbors will love. This is K-Seal Ultimate Permanent head gasket repair. Yes, right now we are those guys. We're gonna cook, we're gonna pour a mechanic in a can into our radiator and uh, circulate it and see if that does something. I've never tried to actually fix a head gasket with this. And Pete actually sur suggested a product from Moroso, which I would use, I just don't have it. Um, but I did go the extra mile when I was at the parts store. I looked for one that would work with water in the radiator, not coolant. Um, this might have a little bit of coolant left in it from over the winter, but we're gonna be running water in the radiator because we're going to a drag strip soon to test the car. And, you know, coolant is very slippery. If it leaks on the racetrack, you're ruining everyone's day, not just crashing your car. So we're gonna run water. Um, and so essentially what this says, shake the bottle, add the radiator or the top radiator hose, Start the engine, run up to normal operating temperature, which for this thing is about 
you know, we try to launch the starting line at like 140 degrees, end of a pass, it's 180, 190. Um, let's see, leave heater controls at cold, no problem, we don't have any. Uh, the leak normally stops within three to five minutes, but may require more on one heat cool cycle. K-Seal Ultimate will make a seal where there is a pressure differential in the cooling system at the failure point. Wow, that's really cool. K-Seal Ultimate mixes with all types of coolant slash antifreeze. There is no need to drain or flush the system prior to adding the product. Plus, unlike many other products, K-Seal Ultimate works especially well if there is only water in the cooling system. So it doesn't matter what kind of coolant you have in here, or if you just have water or a mixture of both, this thing should work. Well, okay. Well, rather than smoke out the house, I guess we'll push the car out in the driveway, pour this in and fire it up. Well, I guess I can I'll just pour it in now, and then we'll fire it up. Oh, wait, forgot to shake it well. I did give it a pretty good pre-shake. You did? Ah, oh, dude, thanks. I figure it's been sitting on the shelf long enough, I better shake it real, real good. They're shaking your money maker. And no, they're not paying me to say this. We've used this before on Roadkill and the stuff tends to work. It kind of looks like chocolate milk. Pete tells me all new engines he builds with aluminum blocks, he usually pours that Moroso stuff in anyway. Um, I've never done this on a brand new aluminum motor, but this- Very uh, interesting fact. This. Uh, Keith Black Racing Engine's aluminum block. We have already had one leak with it. Um, if you guys remember, one of the um, bell housing mounting bolts went into water somehow. Um, and so we had a leak there. In fact, we'll roll some footage here real quick of Joe trying to fix the leak in the head gasket by taking the transmission out of the car. Yeah, that was fun. Because I, <laughs> I told him. Another I was trans like, for Joe to do. Yeah, I was like, well, you know, because it was coming off it was coming off the bell housing and I was like, well, maybe when it was at tick and you guys pulled the trans out, maybe that one hole that I plugged um, that goes into water, maybe something happened there, maybe it's leaking there. So Joe pulled the trans out only to find out that's not the leak. Cookie, where are you going? Where are you going? Come here, little one. Hi. Hey, where are you going? Hello. When you're playing with your friends? Ah, kooky. All right, Bubba. Got to start the car up. It's going to be really loud. It's going to apologize in advance, okay? This is going to have a giant vacuum leak because the blower gasket is out, and it's not going to want to idle. Well, it's going to idle really high, I guess, I should say. say you thought it dripped and then it stopped dripping? Yeah, but it started again. So it's like it's just not dripping as bad as it was before. Bottle did say it could take two to three heat cycles. Oh yeah, it did say that. Well, right now it's at 135 degrees. It's not gonna wanna go any higher because both fans are on. Yeah. So I'll plug in, raise the fan on temperature up to let it get warmer. And then uh, maybe that'll help. Okay.
still dripping. So let it heat soak. And we'll fire it again. This is a pretty cool view that probably not a lot of you have seen, which is the bottom of the Cadillac. Um, I've talked about it before. We have a mock-up big block Chevy in here, um, but it's mostly empty. There's a crank in there, but no rods, no pistons, no oil pan, you know, no cam. It's just basically a block, heads, and a crank in there. But what we do have in here now, thanks to Joe, is a new mid plate with some brackets that are hanging out here next to the frame. Um, this was the one I originally installed for mock-up. This mid plate, I borrowed it from my friend Ryan. It wasn't wide enough, so I mail ordered a new one. Joe trimmed it down to fit, and now what we've got to do is um, either weld these brackets right to the frame or bolt them through the frame and sleeve the frame. And so we're going to decide right now how lazy we want to be about that. And uh, we'll probably trim these brackets down a little bit because um, they're probably bigger than they need to be. But this gives you a general idea. Um, in our Cadillac, the torque of the engine, the brunt of it, is transferring through the dowels into this mid plate. And so, uh, you know, the bell housing is clamping the things together, but those beefy dowels coming out of the engine block into the bell housing. That's really what's taking the twisting motion of everything. And so this is a fairly critical item here. We'll weld plate here so that the plate can sit on something. Because otherwise, yeah, what you're asking for it to do is you're asking the two bolts, which are right. in shear, single shear even, to take the force of everything. So we'll probably weld the bracket right here. We could probably just weld these to the frame. I'm trying to think of a situation when we, when that would burn us. Like, it would be nice to be able to just unbolt everything, but I'm, I'm also sitting here going, well, what's the downside to having this bracket welded to the frame? I mean, I don't see any reason not to. Why would you have to take it back out? You, you can, well, I'm just thinking of, if you ever had to remove the motor and trans, if the bracket's welded to the frame, the plate's sitting on it, you're going forward with it anyway, so it probably doesn't matter if this bracket gets welded to the frame. So I think what we'll do is we'll take these out, we'll weld a tab right here to it. Okay. And then we'll trim some of this back, so we'll, we'll reduce the height of it so that we can then go and weld it to the chassis of the car. Okay. And then uh, if you do it that way, then we don't have bolts going through it, we don't have to weld tubes and sleeve the frame. Yeah. Uh, it'll save a little bit of time, and it'll be just as, just as cool. All right, this is our driver's side mid plate mount. This bolts to the frame, this bolts to the plate. What we want to do is support the plate with a gusset here that's going to extend forward far enough for the plate to sit on and then backwards enough to get welded to it. So what this ends up looking like is probably a triangle. So our mid plate's going to sit here on this like a shelf and then we'll probably have it come back to here. So we want this to be about a half inch. And then we want this to come up about a half inch. And then there's that. And we want this to come back. We'll probably bring it back about an inch and then curve it down. And this is called CAD. It's a cardboard aided drafting. It's a very, very high tech technique for uh, plotting, planning, executing the fabrication of high end racing parts. used the world over. Okay, where's our half inch mark? Right here. Yeah, so this piece will get TIG welded here, 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 here. Then what we'll do is we'll uh, probably chop the bottom of this bracket off because it doesn't need to be that big. And then this bracket will get welded here, 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 here to the frame of the car. I like it. It's good.
So we'll knock the corners off of this, make it look nice, grind the coating off of it. This coating is there to keep the steel from rusting, but it also doesn't weld as good because you have to penetrate that coating before you get to your base metal. So we'll knock the coating off every edge, cut these corners off, and then this will be ready to go. Now we need some material. I see some stuff on your side. How thick you want it? Uh, it could be eighth inch, three sixteenths. Is that gonna be too small? Oh, perfect. Perfect. We, we just least... gotta find another piece like that. Yeah, we can at least get one of them out of it. Yeah. Our uh, mid plate mounts are all welded and cooled off, so we're gonna put these in. Oh, yeah. Uh oh. What do you mean, uh oh? No, uh oh. This is great. Uh -oh. What? For some reason, this isn't fitting. Why not? My holes are like half a hole off. Do you How is that? I don't know. What'd you do? Oh. What? So, what happened was. What had happened? These, the tabs weren't matching up from one side to the other. So I cut this one shorter, thinner, the to motor. match that side. Oh, the motor's offset. And when I did this, uh -huh. pushed it up. Now, if you look up in there, you can see what holes don't line up now. Yeah, that's because the motor's offset to one side. So of course the mounts wouldn't be the same. Whoopsie. No big deal. We can fix it. We have the technology. This one is money. This one is perfect. So this whole chassis is MIG welded and the roll cage is TIG welded. So we'll MIG weld the mount to the chassis to keep everything same, same. This is our hot rolled steel plate sitting on a chunk of aluminum. The aluminum will act as a heat sink and also it'll allow me to fill the hole without joining the two pieces of metal together. And I'll be welding this at about 115 amps on DC. How are we going to fix that thing now that I've all welded the holes up? Well, since I can't get the flap disc into those corners, this is a little handy dandy belt sander. Your Harbor Freight Special yeah. works great, actually. How much was that thing? Dude, I don't know, like maybe 50 bucks if that. They're, they're pretty cheap, but they're super handy because they get into really tight corners. Yeah, do you know why you bought that? Do you remember why? Yeah, because we didn't have the right tubing when we built the hitch. And uh, uh -huh. I had to grind the hell out of the inside of that thing. Yeah, just so that we could get the I spent the a long time grinding that. Yeah, we bought universal tubing to make our trailer hitch for the roadkill ramp truck. And then when we went to put an aftermarket drawbar in with a ball on it, it uh, it wouldn't go in. And Joe, you, Joe used that truck. to take nearly a quarter inch of material out of that <laughs> hitch. <laughs> All the way back inside yeah. there. And it came from Harbor Freight, which is, I don't know why I still have the ad in here, but that's where it came from. Yeah. God, I love tools. Yeah. See, we're straight. This is how much I love tools. I love tools so much, I don't even get upset when something gets screwed up. Because if it means I have to try a new and amazing tool, fine. Fine. Let's go. Allow me to provide you with some illumination. Almost drop it in my face. Not in the money maker. <laughs> there ain't no money being murdered from that face. Ah, dude. You got a face for radio, dude. Don't sell yourself. <laughs> How far off were we? Yep. Glad we welded that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> That's a whole lot of slotting. Let's see, look at this way. Now both brackets will look exactly the same and the holes will be in the right spot. Right.
fam. There you go. She is on there. We need to weld the front edge, but we'll do that next time the motor and trans come out. In the meantime, mid plate mounts done. I love this welder. So good. This will MIG weld. This will TIG weld. This will even stick weld if you want to build a bridge or something. And uh, it will work off 115 or 240 volts. And you can leave everything hooked up. Both torches, the MIG gun. You want to swap from 240 to 115. It's as easy as just threading a different plug onto the end of the cord. This is my everyday do it everything welder. It works fabulous. It really does. Fabulous. It welds so good. <laughs>
This is a piece of tubing we had laying around. It is inch and three quarter ID. We're going to cut it here, then we're gonna cut it in half. Then we are gonna hose clamp it around our inch and a quarter OD steering column. There'll be a clamp there and a clamp here. And then this bracket will get welded right there. And then our switch will bolt to that bracket. And then this becomes infinitely adjustable with two hose clamps. I think this will work. Now, uh, prior to cutting and welding, we've knocked the coating off of it, the pickling, which is what keeps it from rusting while it's in storage, using cordless drill and this awesome tool from 525 Industries. I've showed you guys this before. They are not paying me to tell you about it. I'm just telling you that if you want to remove coating off of something round, this tube sander is awesome. It is pricey though. This thing is several hundred dollars, um, but it has saved us a bunch of time. And if you take your time when you do it, you can leave a very fine line right here and no tiger striping. You can make your tubing look awesome and professional. Everybody, there is our new clutch switch mount, and it works good. Now all we gotta do is make a bracket to go from the pedal to that arm, and as you can see up here, where it says clutch switch, I move the arm that's engaged, let off, disengage, and engage the clutch. Okay, and this right here, right there is where clutch switch. Engaged, that's disengaged, engage, disengage, engage, disengage. So this is perfect because we can make we can move this, we can re-index it and make a bracket right off of here that just comes out like an L bracket that bolts here and comes mm -hmm. over and hits this. And we can flip this around where the ball is closer if we want. Yeah. Although it's kind of nice to be able to access it is. So we'll just make a bracket that picks up this bolt hole, L bracket, and that comes over here. As you can see here, this is our little bracket that's going to come off the clutch pedal and go swing in and hit our uh, clutch switch. As you can see, I kind of had to bend it at an angle. It's not straight. I had to bend it at an angle because when it dips down, it just kind of started to turn down in a way. So I wanted it to come up a little bit flatter. That way it hits the switch nice and perfect. Now I'm gonna drill some holes in it, bolt it up to the clutch pedal. Let's see how that works. All right, so I've got our plate in here. And as you can see, go down, hits it just right. Could be a little bit taller. So I wonder, hmm, I'm gonna have to do something a little bit different. Just barely hitting the switch. But for now, I think that might work. Maybe not. Hey, okay. right, folks, new and improved. Boom. I like it. Oh yeah, that works good. So all we did was bend some metal, weld a little sheet metal tab to the end of it. Give me one more. Joe, give me one more. One more? One yeah. more. One more. One more. For good measures. Boom. And everything is ind independently adjustable from each other. Our clutch pedal stop can be adjusted by itself without changing where our switch is. And if we need to move our switch, we just loosen up these two, two hose clamps and slide it up or down the steering column. Or move your arm. Move what arm? The, the arm on here, which is actually pretty easy to move now that the Allen's on the front side. Yeah, that's true. So that we've is got true. multiple ways of adjusting it. Yeah, we can screw this up all kind of different ways. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> We're good at that. The only next problem is the blower gasket blew out the back. I think either 
when Mike coughed it in Bakersfield on his roadco shoot or somewhere, it sneezed on us and spit the gasket out the back. So now we've got to remove the blower, change the gasket, put it all back together, and then we are going to go testing. Hopefully soon. No exact date, but we're going soon. All right, good news. Uh, ran the motor again, got it up to temp, about 180 degrees, and no leaks. So that's great news. Um, so we're not gonna pull the intake or the head off. We're just gonna lift the supercharger now and replace the base gasket. There we go. <clears throat> okay. Oh yeah. Oh, Dude. she blew out. <laughs> we're missing a lot of gasket. Wow. Mike. Huh. Interesting. Okay. And where did the piece go? That's so weird. The only thing I can think of is maybe the bolts came loose at some and point. And it just chafed? Yes. Yeah. But it's straight up gone. This was actually how I found it. It was like that. Yeah. But the driver's side completely blown apart and that chunk of the gasket is straight up gone. But look at, if you look at this, it Pushed looks it like way. it was chafing it. Like it was moving. I can't remember when, but at one point we realized the blower was loose. I just don't remember when that happened. I don't remember if that was back in Bas Bakersfield during the roadkill shoot, or if it was when we were in Alabama, when we broke the trans, but. I have a feeling when we were in Alabama, we did tighten up the blower. I thought we did. We did when we were at the track. Hmm. But a lot of this damage might have happened during your road trip. It could have. Absolutely could have. Wow. It makes me wonder, did I race Freiburger? With a blown gasket? With a blown gasket. Very, could, very well could have. I mean, I'm not one for excuses, but damn. <laughs> Dude, that's pretty bad. <clears throat> All right, you longtime fans of this channel know that I've had a blower shop supercharger on the Hemi and Blasphemy for oof, eight years now, I think. And this particular one is not the original blower for this car. The other one was an 871 and it did have the cool port injection in the case. However, it was pretty well wore out. So during that road trip I was talking about where we filmed an episode of Roadkill, the blower shop sent out a new one, I sent back my old one, and this new one has what they call a race case. And this case is wildly different than my old one. It has what's called a delta opening or discharge port, shaped like a triangle. And what this is doing is Instead of having this cut all the way out like my old one, which you would think would flow better because it's a bigger opening, what this does is this seals a longer portion of the rotor for longer. So as the rotor's twisting and these Teflon strips are mating with the case, it's holding the air on the rotor longer before it discharges it. And what this does eventually in conjunction with a revised upper part of the case, is it basically gives you the boost faster. So the ramp happens much quicker with this blower. And then beyond the fact that it no longer feels or sounds like there's ball bearings loose in this, like my old blower, we bolted this on and picked up over 100 horsepower over my wore out blower. It was incredible. Um, and so I'm stoked to put this back on. I don't exactly know why that gasket blew apart other than I think during the road trip, the, uh, the nuts for all the studs that hold this together came loose and it must have just been vibrating the whole time and cut the gasket. So we'll put a fresh one on now, cinch the bolts back up and the next time we go to the track, you know, we'll have a new clutch switch that works better. We'll have a blower gasket that's intact. This thing, if it runs right, should go about 160 miles an hour in about eight and a half seconds in the quarter mile. It hasn't done that in years. Um, when I raced Freiburger, it ran, I think 875, 877, somewhere around there, which is not bad in the quarter mile. 
I mean, it's a stick shift car that I'm granny shifting. It's not bad at all, but there's more there. And I hope to find it the next time at the track. Clean her up a little bit before I put the gasket on. There we go. We'll have to go in there and uh, trim it right here. Here you go. We're back. Voila. <coughs> All right.